everyone. Today we're going to take a look at how to use some of the tools that are on the punch toolbar in the Generations program. Even though these are basic shapes, there are a lot of fun things that you can do with them. Look on your work area window to locate your punch toolbar. You may need to close your building block bar. If you're not seeing this green toolbar, and I'm going to go ahead and pull mine over here, either on the side of your create toolbar or below it. Please go up to your view from the main menu and in your toolbar options remove the check mark next to your building block bar. If you have a smaller screen and these are covered you can grab those by that little bar at the top. Grab this menu in this little toolbar and just dock it right next to your create toolbar and that allow you more access to these tools. So we're going to take a look at what we can do with some basic, basic shapes from this and how much fun they can become. One of my favorite tools are these two stars. So we're going to start with just the polygon star. If I left click on that icon, my input box opens up and then I can make the changes that I want from right here or of course I can always edit them later. In the little properties section here, it says type, and this is going to just be a line type. I'm not going to be able to change this because I selected the running stitch tool here. Under my stitch type, I can, however, change it to whatever type of running line I want it to be. If you do want to change this, just left click on that double run option and click on the small black drop down arrow and select the stitch type that you would like. To select a stitch type, just click on the type that you want and it's set to go. Now I can also change my color and I'm going to talk about this real quick as well. If I have a thread catalog open, like in my case I have a thread catalog open, I have the Robinson Anton catalog, I can still change it to the color that I want and this will match it to my selected thread catalog. So let's click on that color chip and then click on the little button that's next to it and here's my basic windows colors. If I want to define a custom color, I just click on this button and I come over here and move my mouse to about the color I want. I might have to slide this if I want it to be a little bit lighter, you know, or a little darker, I can slide it down. Once I'm done, I just say OK and you can see that color chip has changed. Now this is where it gets very interesting. In my N, which is the number of points I can make on this star, um, I can put any number in here, but of course I have to be able to make it so my machine can stitch it. So right now it's at five because it's just a basic star with five points. Under the step, I have this option of two. Now. I can change either one of these settings, but the number of steps I can use are going to be based on the number of points or the end options that I've selected. So we'll start with making just the basic star shape first. To create the star, just move over to a blank spot in your work area or place your cursor where you want this to be created and just left click your mouse button and drag it to the desired size. And if I want to misshape or not proportionally shape this, I can hold the control key and drag it so that it's wider or taller. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it at the default size and place a second left click. And I have this little node that shows up and I still don't have any stitches yet. But what I can do with this node is when I mouse over it, I'm going to get that starburst type of cursor and I can left click and hold my mouse button down and drag this so that the points are rounded or very pointed. When I'm done with shaping those points, I just press the enter key on my keyboard and the stitches are placed into this particular little design. Now let's talk about what we can do with the number of points on this star and how the step affects that. The number of points or the N point here, if I left click in that section, I can backspace over the 5 and if we want to make this a little more dramatic, let's try 15 of these points. Now if I click on the step option, instead of just 1 or 2 like I had in the original one, I have the option of 7, 4, 2 or 1. 
we'll start with one. When I select one, and I come over here and I left click and I drag, and then place my second left click, you can see, even if I drag this, I'm not going to get any dramatic points. That step of one is giving me these points. You can see the small points on this shape, but it's not really giving me any overlap in this. So I'm going to press Escape. Let's go back to that tool. And we'll go ahead and I'm just going to leave it at the default color, but we had our point set at 15. So when I clicked on the step, I had the option of 4 or 7. 1, 2, 4, or 7. Well, this is kind of what 2 does. So there's a little bit of an overlap here. So let's go ahead and make one with 2. Not nearly as dramatic, right? It's, it's just kind of a nice little shape. But I do have the 15 points here. Let's try 4. And I'll just left click and drag. And you can see what it's doing. It's doing the overlaps for me. The two setting here gave me two overlaps. This setting here gave me two overlaps. The four setting gave me four overlaps of these lines, right? And if I say seven, I'm going to have seven overlaps on these lines. So the step is going to control your overlaps. It also means that you can see here's two, the opening's very large. Four, it's still quite large, and at seven, that opening shrinks down quite a bit. So I hope that explains a little bit about what's going on. Two overlaps, four overlaps, and seven. So if I want to be very dramatic, and I come over to this and I say, well, let's make 50 of these points. And I click on the step here, and then click on the drop down arrow, my top overlap is going to be 23. Now remember, the larger the number, the more overlaps, and the smaller the opening here. So I have to be careful that I don't create something that's so heavy in the middle that it won't be able to stitch. But let's take a look at what 23 does. Remember, just left click and drag. And when it's at the size you want, just place another left click. You can still use your control key to create something kind of neat or misshapen as well, see? But for right now, I'm just going to create the basic shapes. Press Enter, and there's my basic shape. Now, this should stitch OK. It might be a little bit heavy in the middle. I'd have to look and, and you can do a little stitch, and it depends on what line type I pick as well. But you can see the difference here. I have 23 overlaps now. If I want to make this a little more open, I pick a smaller number of overlaps. If I still want the number of points here, then, you know, or if I want more points, I can do that as well. But this overlap feature is going to control the opening in the center here. Let's take a look at if we just pick maybe 19. See the difference in the opening? Now, even though I'm making these with more points and I'm changing the number of overlaps that these are going to have, I still can make this rounded or very pointed. All I have to do is drag on that little node. I'm going to go ahead and press enter and create the design. So now you can see, you know, this is a lot of fun. You can do a lot of spirograph type designs with this. You can enter pretty much any number within reason. You know, I can say, you know, I want 100 points. My steps are always going to increase and give me more options. This would be very, very tight because this is 23, unless I were able to make this quite large. So let's try 33 with that left click and drag and you can see there's 33 overlaps on this and the place that I have to worry about when I use this tool to make an open design like this is going to be where these overlaps converge on the inside of this shape. So I hope that explains those a little bit better. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new design file and let's take a look at the solid star. So if we go to the solid star from the punch toolbar and left click on that icon, I have some different options with this. It says auto, line type or fill type, I mean, is auto. So that auto doesn't mean auto digitize. It's based on what I select from here. If I click on this option and I look, I have all of my running stitches and my fill types. So when it says auto here, the minute I say, well, triple run, 
then that means it's going to be a line. If I click on the auto option and say, you know, I really want this to be an area and not a line, then those options below are going to change. Let's go ahead and do line on this one as well. Now this is a star, but it's a little bit different. Here's my, you know, run type and my color, and here's my number of five. So, you know, basically that's going to create a little star like that. And of course I can adjust that. I could adjust here so that this is more rounded, and I can adjust here, and I can even come down here and adjust it so that I can really reshape this star. If I say, you know, I really would like 50 points on this, I don't have the option of that overlap in this. I just have the option of scaling this. And you can see there's that little point, and when I drag that point, I can open up that center or close it down a little bit. And I have these two points, which means I can make these, you know, points taller or shorter. And this point here is going to let me widen them and curve them out a little bit. It'll widen down at the bottom, but these points at the top are going to stay the same. When I press enter, the design is created. So even though these are the same shapes, because of the type of tool they are, I have different options and I can create some different effects. So I hope that explains those tools a little bit better to you. Now, let's take a look at that tool using it as an area. If I come up here and say, you know, I really want this to go from auto to area, and I'm not going to let the program select the fill type. I'll go ahead and say I want it to be a complex fill. Number of points is still five. Well, let's try something like 25 points. And this is going to be solid and filled. So when I come over here and click and drag that, I have the options, even though this is a fill, to adjust this, drag these points tighter, round them off a little bit if I want, and when I press enter, the design is going to be created in whatever fill type I selected. In this case, it was a complex fill. I'm going to press escape to turn off that tool. I can edit this area or line with any of my editing tools in the program after they're created. But you can see you can have a lot of fun playing with these different shapes, add different points. And in the case of the star with the, you know, line option only, I can create some really neat interesting spirograph type of designs. I just have to remember that the more steps actually means the more overlaps of those points. So one time around it's just going to give me one set of points, you know, one line. Four times around gives me four lines to make those points. So play with these tools, have fun playing with them, and get comfortable with them because we're going to use these tools as we go through and learn to make some really unique, interesting designs. Thank you.